Hi everyone, welcome to The Analyst here on YouTube, Twitter, and Rumble. My name is Jacob. Lots of things to discuss for today on Tokenized Securities Monday. Tuesday will be gaming tokens. Wednesdays will be Bitcoin and ordinals along with DeFi on Bitcoin. And Thursdays here on this channel will be meme tokens just to have some fun around here. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. But let's get started for today with quick news. Bitcoin fell almost 3% for the week. I told you guys to watch out for that CME gap of $39,000 in last week's video. I think this is just a normal pullback with the market getting frothy. This is an opportunity to buy ahead of the Bitcoin ETF, which is the strongest narrative and catalyst at the moment. Now, how you play the Bitcoin ETF is up to you. I am playing the move a bit defensively because... We have just seen about a 140% increase in Bitcoin for the year. Could we see a buy the news and buy the rumor? Where in this case, after the ETF is passed, lots of people continue to buy up crypto. I mean, sure we can. And it could happen with a quick dip and then we go the next day downward. But only time will tell and we will have to see what awaits in these markets. In the meanwhile, guys, short to medium term, I am still bullish and optimistic. Now, with dips and corrections, if you're new to this market, well, they are normal and you just have to get used to it. But if it makes you really sick, most likely you are new here, then there are less volatile instruments like equities such as stock indices and bonds out there. And there are people on social media who are now talking about an altcoin season and how the Bitcoin price continues to move down, giving altcoins time to catch up. But I am like, where have you guys been already? Look at Bonk, the meme coin on the Solana network. That project is up 1000% for the year. But if you picked it up a month ago, you are already up 10x. The market cap is currently at around $700 million, which is absolutely insane. But if we look at more respectable projects like Avalanche, which is currently at a $13 billion market cap, it is up 172% for the year, which is incredible. And in full transparency, I sold all my ETH to buy more Avalanche because they have done a lot of interesting partnerships and moves within the TradFi community like JP Morgan and the security exchange INX, just to name a few. And they are taking crypto gaming pretty seriously as well with the gaming studio Myria. If I was to pick who is next on the list as far as an ETF, based on how this technology is more ingrained with TradFi, well, I have Avalanche neck to neck with Solana on the list from what I am seeing. Let's look at Amir Rosick, co-founder of Block Geeks, who had a YouTube channel a while back in Canada. He just put out some research on Solana versus Avalanche on which blockchain reigns supreme. And I also hold Solana, so I hope both wins. Regardless, let us take a look at what Amir has to say. Amir discussed in this article how both worked. For Avalanche, that works on a consensus protocol. It offers a unique approach to achieve high scalability, low latency, and decentralization with blockchains and your projects. This approach is especially beneficial for cryptocurrencies and can be implemented on the Avalanche platform. And for Solana, that works off a proof of history consensus mechanism it provides fast confirmation times in milliseconds, consensus efficiency, and security by leveraging historical data and preventing malicious actors from manipulating the transaction history. Now, when dealing with blockchain, let's be honest here, people are leaving Ethereum with its high gas fees, but how does AVAX token compare to the SOL token? Well, Transaction fees are obviously an essential consideration for users when choosing a blockchain network. And Avalanche transaction fees are paid using the native AVEX token. The fee varies based on network congestion and the complexity of the transaction being processed. However, 
Avalanche's fee structure is designed to be competitive and cost-effective for users. And with Solana, on the other hand, it employs a similar fee model where transaction fees are paid using SOL tokens. These fees also depend on factors such as network demand and computational resources required for processing transactions. Solana aims to keep its transaction fees low to ensure accessibility for users while maintaining an efficient network. Now, both Avalanche and Solana strive to provide affordable transaction fees, making them attractive options for individuals and businesses to utilize blockchain technology. Furthermore here, they offer your own unique governance models and smart contract capabilities. And when evaluating developer adoption compared to Ethereum, both Avalanche and Solana have been gaining traction among developers due to their unique features and potential for scalability. These platforms provide developers with a seamless experience by offering support for popular development frameworks like Truffle and Remix. Now, this article by Amir is fairly dense and was last updated on November 20th, just a few weeks ago. I'll leave it in the description, so feel free to review, especially if you guys are both Solana or Avalanche fans. Overall for the month, Avalanche is up an impressive 146%, currently trading at around $40 versus Solana up just 25% for the month at above $70 per token. And comparing each market cap to one another, we have Solana at $30 billion versus Avalanche coming around half of that at around $15 billion. I could see Solana reach $100 per token before the Bitcoin ETF and Avalanche maybe around $80, but I want to know your thoughts, so feel free to leave it below in the comment section. Now, which is better? Well, it all depends on the use case. As I said earlier, Avalanche is really sweeping the gaming narrative and taking the lead in that as a layer one and layer two blockchain solution, while Solana has positioned itself as the Ethereum killer going towards the next cycle. And lately, the hype around several Solana airdrops like the Jita token caused a lot and lots of stir and attention by handing over 200 and $25 million to just 10,000 GTA users. There was even a story of one user getting over $20,000 worth of GTA tokens simply by testing GTA with a trading volume of only $500, which is absolutely insane and mind boggling. So there you go. Now, since this is Tokenized Securities Monday, I promised last week to put a short description of several of the tokens over on the INX exchange. The first token is INX, which is the exchange token. Then we have the Republic Notes, which just recently launched on the Avalanche platform and also listed on the INX exchange. It's basically a digital asset backed by an evergreen private equity portfolio, which shares its profits to holders of the note by depositing USD into your wallets. And so every time your profit pool reaches $2 million, the dividends are paid out to note holders. Companies in your portfolio include Dapper Labs, Robinhood, which decided to keep Avalanche on your brokerage platform while delisting Solana, which should tell you all you need to know about your relationship with Avalanche. And Republic Notes also have others in your portfolio, like ShipRocket, Dodo and Akala. Now, overall, for the Republic Notes, they are halfway to reaching your goal of $2 million, where they are currently at $920,000 as we speak. So when that distribution of $2 million rolls out, it won't be as crazy as the Gito airdrop on Solana, but it should get some eyeballs interested. And the spread of dollars already as far as what is received in total investments is not that bad with the lead investor holding a quarter of the position. And the second one, which is Robinhood, holding about $100,000 worth of funds. So even buying about $1,000 worth of these tokens 
you should at least come out with something. And if you are interested in buying this token, we have a referral link in our description to the INX exchange. And we also posted a video last week on things you should know about before opening an account over there. So make sure to watch that video before it gets started. More importantly, not financial advice, informational purposes only on this channel. Now, these other security tokens that I am about to mention have light to no volume trading on the INX platform, but for the spirit of this conversation, I will still go over them. The first one is MSTO token, which is a fine art security token and NFT studio. They were last trading at 15 cents. The next one is BCAP, which stands for Blockchain Capital Token. Last trading at $5.75. The token is an Ethereum-based smart contract digital token representing an indirect fractional non-voting economic interest and the sole limited partnership interest in several of Blockchain Capital's venture interests that include projects like OpenSea, which is an NFT platform, and Anchorage, just to name a few. The next token here is PARTS, which stands for Protus Token. They were funded in Switzerland in 2017 and known as a leading provider of systematic crypto and DeFi exposure, providing a secure way to invest in cryptocurrency assets and DeFi networks that are already traded to over 300 accredited individuals. In 2017, Protus raised a compliant tokenized quantitative crypto fund, one of the first being parts with people in 97 countries able to buy it. The next token is SCI2, that is S-C-I and the number two right at the end of it, which stands for Science Blockchain. They are a smart contract digital token representing an indirect fractional non-voting economic interest in the sole limited partnership interest in the incubator structure and evergreen incubator investing in blockchain technology. Last trading at 48 cents. And the last token is the SPICE token, which stands for SPICE VC token. Currently trading around $3.40, Spice's vision is to utilize blockchain technology to disrupt the venture capital industry with the first truly liquid and inclusive venture capital fund issuing regulatory compliant securities token. Spice's tokens are obviously tradable and will entitle holders to 100% of net exit revenues. Now, I would like to caution you guys by saying that these latter security tokens have absolutely no trading volume. I don't know if that will change and or whether they will end up being a powerful narrative in the next cycle. At this point, it is all a gamble. My thoughts on the matter is instead of Elizabeth Warren, Senator of the United States, and Jamie Dimon, head of JP Morgan, instead of these two going after cryptos, they need to focus on setting and selling security tokens to the public. Going after cryptos, in my opinion, has just been a failing proposition. So imagine if Elizabeth Warren and Jamie Dimon started touting the no token or INX publicly and positively. This exchange will explode the next day. Until they do so, your whole bad karma would be less productive towards security tokens adoption in general. And that's my opinion. And quite frankly, no interest will prevail because it will just leave a sour mouth in the general public's attitude and perception. And if you look at what is trading on the INX platform already, crypto tokens make up most of your revenue, which is quite sad as an exchange with a securities license. So I want to beat this drum very loud and clear that the SEC senators who are anti 
crypto and Congress men and women as well. And financial institutions need to get your act together and start selling and promoting what they feel will be more beneficial to the public than cheering the entire sector down and just being a bully at the end of the day. And that is all I have for the crypto news for today. Tomorrow, I will cover crypto gaming. Have a wonderful day. Bye.